Immortal God, invisible God, immortal God, how great thou art, immortal, immortal God, invisible God, immortal God, how great thou art, immortal God. Invisible God, immortal God, how great thou art, amen, immortal God. Invisible God, immortal God, how great thou art. Father, you are the Almighty. You are the all-sufficient God. You own the heavens, you own the earth. Silver and gold is yours. The cattle upon the thousand hills belong to you. Oh, we bless your holy name. Please accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, let there be light. Amen. In the finances of your children, let there be light. Amen. So that your name will be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Okay. Well, I saw one shout another hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 17 to 19. Ephesians 1, 17 to 19. As you know, our theme for this new month is Let There Be Light. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that he may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us world who believe according to the working of his mighty power let there be light father let there be light so that your children will have correct understanding Amen. of what leads to supernatural prosperity. Amen. The Bible says in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, Hosea 4 verse 6, he said, the people, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Many people will die poor because their eyes of understanding were not enlightened. It is true in Deuteronomy 15 verse 11, Deuteronomy 15 verse 11, that God said, the poor shall not cease in the land. There will always be poor people. But the interesting thing is that he didn't say you'll be one of them. As a matter of fact, he says in Leviticus chapter 25, from verses 25, 35, and 39, Leviticus 25, verses 25, 35, and 39, he keeps on saying, if your brother works poor, in other words, you could all be brethren. And some may wax poor. As far as God is concerned, His purpose for your life is to have enough and more than enough. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17, 
First Timothy chapter 6 verse 17. He says God gives us things greatly or richly to enjoy. He wants us to be rich and to enjoy the, the wealth. The Bible says in Psalm 68 verse 19, Psalm 68 verse 19, it says, God daily loads us with blessings. Every day, he wants to add to your blessings by the load full. That's why the, my uh, people in Yoruba land calls him Olodumare because he gives his blessings by load full. Psalm 68 verse 19, Psalm 68 verse 19 says, he, okay, Psalm 68 verse 19, that's where it says, he daily loads us with blessing. In Genesis chapter 24, from verse 34 to 35, Genesis 24, 34 to 35, Abraham, who was his very special friend, became great because God blessed him. Isaac, his son, in Genesis 26 from verse 12 to 14, Genesis 26 from verse 12 to 14, he not only became rich, he became wealthy. The Bible says the Philistines began to envy him. As for Jacob, when you read Genesis chapter 30 from verse 36 to 43, Genesis 30, 36 to 43, he became exceedingly prosperous. And when you read 2 Chronicles chapter 1 from verse 6 to 12, 2 Chronicles 1, 6 to 12, Solomon flourished. In other words, if your eyes of understanding were to be opened, you will know that prosperity is in categories. We have the rich, we have the wealthy, we have the exceedingly wealthy, and we have those who are prosperous and those who are flourishing. Because when Solomon began. He gave a thousand bond offering to God. Second Chronicles chapter 1 from verse 6 to 12. Second Chronicles 1, 6 to 12. But by the time we heard about him again in Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 5. Second Chronicles 7 verse 5. He was able now to give 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. He had moved on from just prospering to flourishing. But we need to understand that prosperity is not a function of prayer. I understand that somebody said that uh, when a man of God said, we will pray, and the prayer will take care of the virus. That one fellow said, why don't you pray that poverty may end? I laughed. Every disease has its own medicine. The medicine for prosperity is not prayer. It is something else. So and reaping. First Corinthians chapter three verse six. First Corinthians three verse six. It, uh, uh, Paul said, "I planted, Apollo watered, but God gave the increase." Meaning what? If there had been no planting and no watering, it doesn't matter how much prayer. There will be no harvest. I mean, I, I think I've told some of you before. Suppose a man prepares a very good piece of land, acres of very good land, humus soil, 
And then he goes there every day for 30 days, fasting, not eating anything, pray, crying to God. I say, God, let her rise, germinate here. Lord God Almighty, you know I'm a child of God. You know I love you. I have been fasting. I have been praying. Let rice grow here. And he does not plant rice. The only thing that will grow there will be weeds. For you to prosper, you must sow. You must water. Prosperity is a function of scattering. Not a function of prayer. Proverbs chapter 11 verse 24. Proverbs 11 verse 24. Tells us clearly there is someone who scatters and yet he increases. And there's someone who we told more than is necessary and he tends to poverty. You want to prosper? The Bible says, learn to scatter. The prosperity, divine prosperity is a function of liberality. The same Proverbs chapter 11 verse 25, Proverbs 11 verse 25 says, The liberal soul shall be made fat, and he that waters shall be watered himself. Prosperity is a function of giving, not a function of prayer. Luke chapter 6 verse 38. Luke 6 38 says, Give and you shall be given. He didn't say, Pray and you shall be given. He said, Give. Give. And you shall be given. And anybody can give. You can give your way out of poverty. You can give your way out of lack by Sowing from the little you have. I pray that your light of understanding, your eyes of understanding, will be enlightened. And you begin to follow the instructions of God Amen. towards giving, sowing, scattering, and being liberal so that very soon, your request for prosperity will become a reality. Amen. I've given you an illustration before. One day I was speaking to the house help in my house. The cook, the cleaner, the gardener, all those people who come to my money prayer. And when it is after we finish the money prayer and it's time to give, these people who just put their face down and pretend to be praying. <laughs> so I told them one day, you keep praying like this, you will remain poor. If you don't learn to give from the little you have, you will remain where you are. So they began to give from the little they have. And suddenly, all the people who used to come to the house, who will be entertained by these same people, and who will leave just saying bye-bye, suddenly God spoke to their hearts, ah, <laughs> these people had blessed you, bless them. Very soon, my children had a box set aside. Anytime somebody comes and they entertain the fellow, when the fellow is going, he's going to say, hey, God bless you. And before you know it, my house has begun to have some beautiful dresses that I know I didn't buy. They are beginning to have shoes that I didn't come from London, that I didn't bring from London. 
Why? Because what you sow, that's what you will reap. And so, those of you who are here, listening to me in your various homes, I pray that your eyes of understanding will be lightened. Amen. And you begin to follow the principles of God. And very soon, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, when they are co counting the worthy people in Africa, you'll be among the first hundred. Amen. Let me pray for you, and then you can talk to God. But before I do that, if there's any one of you listening to me in your homes, and you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, Please do so now, because God is not going to prosper the wicked. If he prospers you in your wickedness, it's going to lead to your destruction. So if you are there, and you have not yet given your life to Jesus, cry unto him now, ask him to save your soul, and he will do so in Jesus' name. Amen. So my Father and my God, I want to thank you for your word this morning. I pray that the Holy Spirit will let the seed of your word germinate in their hearts. Amen. That the eyes of understanding of these people will become enlightened. Amen. And they begin to do everything necessary to make them prosper according to your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, my Father and my God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah.